Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. So guys, today I'm going to address a question I've gotten several times in the Facebook group about what are my thoughts on the UV sterilizing light boxes and cases for phones and credit cards and other such things. So if you wanna hear what I have to say about that, just keep watching. So this question has come up several times in the Facebook group. What about these boxes that are meant to sterilize phones and keys and things like that with UVC light? And I thought I would just take a look. Now I did order a couple of items I'm going to show you. Uh, so while I started out planning for this video to be a review of the specific items I purchased to try out, I've realized that the process of trying these has helped my thinking to evolve. It's sort of honed my thoughts on this technology and its use in a home. And while I'm going to show you these particular items and I will link them down in the description box below, I really want to talk about my conclusions. Okay, so first of all, what is UVC light or what is UV light in general? UV light is a form of radiation and it has wavelengths anywhere in a range from 10 to 400 nanometers. Now, UVC is actually the lowest number of nanometers. So UVA, I'm gonna read as I go because I couldn't commit these to memory for some reason. UVA is 315 to 400 nanometer wavelength. UVB is 280 to 315 nanometer wavelength. And UVC is 100 to 280. Now UVC is particularly dangerous for human skin and the eyes especially. So what you'll find on the market, typically when you look for a UVC sterilizing device, it's something that has a fail-safe mechanism, kind of like a microwave. So when you open it, the light automatically switches off. It has to be closed in order for it to be operative, which of course begs the question like, do you know it was on? You can record with your phone, I suppose. So it really is settled science at this point that the UVC light does sterilize objects. It does eliminate microbes, not only COVID-19, but a multitude of things. But because it's so dangerous to human beings, there are a lot of implications with that. So uh, the best use for UVC light is really not so much in particular boxes, right? Because this box would be the right size for this item and you can only fit so many things and everything has to be completely exposed to the light. You know, the real place for this is something like in a room where you've got uh, UVC light coming from the ceiling and then it has to have some kind of a fail-safe mechanism where if a door opens or person enters, it automatically goes off. There's also a use for this in the medical industry with a shortage of PPE currently. You can uh, sterilize masks and reuse masks without having them subjected to the water, which can start to break down the integrity of the fabric. So I think that there is a place for UVC uh, light sterilization. I, I don't think so. I know so. Uh, but, you know, after using these a little bit, uh, here's the spoiler alert. I will say that my thinking about the application for small items in a home, my thinking evolved on that quite a bit from looking at these items. Okay. So I purchased two different items, both on Amazon. I'll link them below. And the first one is phone soap. I think most people have heard of phone soap. It's kind of this really cool slender case and it's meant to sterilize your phone. Of course, it will work with something like credit cards, maybe keys depending on the bulk. Now phone soap was featured on Shark Tank. So that did give me some comfort that probably stood up to some scrutiny because of course the question this, all these things beg is, are they really working, right? Because it's not like you put your phone in and then take your phone out and see that in fact it's been cleaned, you don't know. Now there are some nice things about phone soap unique to this brand. One is that it has the, the light bulb on both sides. So you don't have to, you know, sterilize one side at a time, like one side and then open it up, turn the phone over and do it again. The other thing is it has this canal here so your charger can, your cord can fit through here so you can actually be charging the phone while it's in this case. Uh, this one takes about 10 minutes per cycle and it was about $79 on Amazon. Now, what about the fact that, you know, this doesn't really allow for anything with very much bulk? So I found it impossible to find any other UV light sterilizer that has lights on both sides, okay? Only the phone soap had that. When I went to something bigger, uh, everything had the light bulb on the inside of the lid, and then the better ones had, like this one, this is the 59S, 
and I'll link it below as well. It has a mirror on the bottom. So the theory is that because there's a mirror, uh, the light is going to be reflected and you don't have to flip sides, that things should be sterilized on both sides. I'm not sure I buy that, by the way. Now this has the obvious advantage that you can fit much bulkier items in here. One of the items suggested in the marketing material was like makeup brushes and things like that. But obviously you can fit things that are bigger in here or deeper or have some bulk. This one has a quicker cycle and it actually beeps the whole time it's working. It's not a really annoying beep. It's very soft and subdued, but it does make a little bit of noise the whole time it's working. That wasn't in the plus column. It wasn't bothersome though. Now with both of these, I got really skeptical as to, you know, how well the, do they work? I mean, it's not like you can put something in there and then take it out and know how much cleaner it is, right? One of the things that I saw in the reviews of Phone Soap, which had like in excess of 4,000 good reviews and something like four and a half stars on Amazon, I saw in one of them, somebody had left a picture uh, where they used a Petri dish actually, swabbed their phone and swabbed one side of the Petri dish and put the Petri dish into the box, into the case, and showed the difference on one side and the other. And I thought that was, you know, pretty impressive. Um, but I went ahead and bought this Quantidose UV light card indicator. Now, what this is, is it has, on the other side, it has two spaces. One is for ultraviolet light down here, and it's my understanding is that this is sort of to test the card. So I went outside in the ultraviolet light and I made sure that it turned purple and read the word ultraviolet, which it did. Then this top rectangle here is supposed to turn green and show the word UVC. Now I can see where UVC is sort of carved out there. Same thing with I can see where ultraviolet is sort of carved out if I look at it just at the right angle. But they're supposed to illuminate, like I see the ultraviolet illuminated out in the sun. So I went ahead and decided to try the phone soap one first. And I didn't see a difference on this card. Now wait till the end, okay, because that's not the end of the story. Uh, so I decided I was going to try it with the 59S. And I thought, well, that'll be the definitive answer, right? If the card doesn't light up with one, it's probably going to light up with the other. And then I can say, well, it was probably a fluke that I got a faulty... Uh, phone soap and I could exchange it if I wanted to but lo and behold I put it in the 59s box and I got another nothing looked like nothing here and I thought well is my card faulty no my card's not faulty because the ultraviolet test worked out in the sun so then it occurred to me that perhaps unlike with the ultraviolet there's always some ultraviolet in the house so when I went outside and tested this with ultraviolet the word ultraviolet stayed there for like another minute after I got inside well, I thought to myself, maybe there's really negligible UVC light inside, so maybe this thing lights up, but it lights up very quickly. And therefore, as soon as I open the box, pretty much, you know, it goes away. So I wondered about that. So I started with the phone soap one first because it's just, first of all, the card, anything sits shallower in this box. It's just a very shallow chamber and it's a little more nimble and easy to open and close. Now, these are all made so that they have this fail-safe device that if it's on and you come along and open it, it'll come off, right? The light will go off. But of course, there's a sweet spot in there. There's that fraction of a second where you can quickly open it, you know, and if you're looking and you know right where that card is and you're looking for it, you can see it. And I did it. Lo and behold, I did manage to see the UVC illuminated here instantaneously as soon as I really got the box any more opened, it went away. So... That tells me at least this top light bulb is working. I couldn't manage to do it the opposite way. I think I know that whole thing sounds like a, like too much of a circus almost, but I'm going to read something that's on this card, and that coupled with my experience kind of trying to work with these boxes and make heads or tails of whether I think that this is something I would recommend, I I'm going to read this disclaimer. The disclaimer on Quantidose card says, UV UVC indicator cards are intended as a visual reference of UV UVC radiation only and are not a substitute for microbiological testing to verify decontamination or disinfection. So, you know, it's interesting because these are both supposedly emitting UVA, UVC light. This one has a 10 minute cycle. This one has about a three minute cycle. And you're putting your items in here and taking them out when it tells you and, you know, my guess is it at least cuts down on microbial load, but there's not going to be a way for me to know 
you know, whether this thing is really complete, whether that job is really complete when this cycle says it's done. Now, all this opening and closing the box, yeah, I don't recommend doing that, by the way. It's a little dangerous. You can have a momentary blurriness or a feeling of discomfort. It's the cornea, the conjunctiva. You, it could actually be worse than that if it's more than a few seconds of uh, that UVC light. But you know, all this just got me thinking, are these really providing a benefit in my home that are worth the potential cost, right? Because wherever you have something like this, well, if you got like a little kid at home, for example, they're gonna do this thing all day to try to catch that light or, you know, who knows? I mean, it's not a perfect fail safe, okay? It does go off when the box is open, but this, this isn't perfect. And given that UVC light is really pretty dangerous, I've gotta ask myself how important this is. So. Okay, my phone, I usually rub it down with an alcohol prep. Um, I don't really think that my phone, you know, I'm not really any longer, you know, putting my phone down in places or using my phone without my hands being perfectly clean if I'm out, right? Because this whole pandemic has kind of revamped all kinds of things that we do. So I don't really think my phone is, you know, as filthy as it was like probably a year ago if you would have caught me on any given day. Nowadays, most people's phones, the newer smartphones are waterproof even. I think that if I had a waterproof phone, there's no doubt in my mind, I don't think, I know, that soap and water would be at least as good as this and probably better, right? Because you know whether you lathered it up well and you know whether you soaped it and rinsed it. Uh, whereas this, like I said, it leaves some questions. In addition to that, there's the practicality of, you know, like, this fits in here and something else fits in here and this is ideal for one thing or another thing. I think that when it comes to purchasing one of these UVC light boxes, you're either going to be using it for one very specific thing. Like if all you wanted is for your phone, just your phone, nothing else, you know, maybe this is a good idea for you. Okay, fine. But if you think you might want it for all kinds of different things, then you're going to have to have, you know, the jack of all trades and the master of none. And, you know, in general, if I'm talking about something this expensive, something that's potentially dangerous and something that's, you know, imperfect at best. I don't know that I want the jack of all trades and the master of none. Uh, by the way, with the, with the larger box that's, you know, has more flexibility to fit all different kinds of things. For one thing, I don't buy this notion that this mirror provides the UV light uh, on objects that it says it does. I, in fact, if I had had the option of testing it with the card, okay, I would have put the card face down and looked at the end of a cycle and seen if UVC is lit up there. Now I know that UVC doesn't last. Is the second, the nanosecond the UVC light is withdrawn, this is no longer going to show it, which kind of calls into question how, how helpful is this card really. But the UVC light will only work on the object that is exposed to it and every piece of its surface has to be exposed or that part of the surface is not sterilized. So for example, I thought, you know, maybe masks are a good idea. I think they are, by the way. Masks are being sterilized in UVC light in some health facilities these days. But if you wish to use a UVC light box like this to sterilize the mask, then A, I would only use it the side that's facing the light bulbs, okay? Because the side that is underneath, even though there's a mirror there, the light doesn't get through it and then reflect back, right? I mean, the light bulb will reflect on the mirror if there's not an object in between. But I have to believe the object in between is blocking that light. In addition to that, any little wrinkle in the fabric and that area has not been sterilized. So it's something that you wanna make sure you sort of iron out real well, and then run it through a cycle and then turn it over and run it through a cycle. Um, the other thing is the inside of a mask. Now, if your mask has that delicate aluminum nose piece that most of them have, uh, the Everbrand has a removable nose piece, but anything that has a nose piece sewn in, you're not gonna wanna fold it backwards on itself because that's what breaks those nose pieces is being folded back and forth. Not so much being folded and then unfolded a little bit, but being, turned both ways, okay, 180 degrees, that's what breaks those in the middle. So I would be very careful that I bought some kind of a box that would allow me to stretch the whole thing out, which is a pretty big box. This won't do that, but I'd, I'd want to, you know, stretch the whole thing out flat. Yeah, I felt kind of disappointed with this. I know so many people were interested in exploring these. And again, I think that if you're just looking for something for your phone and your credit cards, you know, I don't see anything wrong with the phone soap other than, like I said, the potential danger, you know, in that you can open this thing and there's that split second where that light's still on. I wish these were designed a little bit better than that. I wish that, you know, perhaps you'd have to unlock something 
and turn off the light before you could open it. I think that would be a much more responsible way to use UVC light. Uh, and I wouldn't really recommend having these anywhere near where children can reach them. You know, for me, I just think uh, I've done pretty well at keeping things clean. I, I'm just not big on having a new, like, pretty expensive device laying around. Now this needs a place. Now it needs to be cleaned off, too, every now and then. It just, you know, it needs whatever it needs. And I have no way of knowing, really, when these are starting to get old. I probably can't replace these. you got to replace the whole item. It's one of these things for me that's just not worth it. That said, I'm glad I had a chance to try it out because I have been like super curious about these and I've been meaning to do it since people have been posting uh, questions about it in the Facebook group. So if this is something you're interested in embracing, you can try a few. Most of them have generous return policies like on Amazon. For me, I just don't see where it's gonna have that must have fit in my life. And I sort of have a high bar for stuff like this. So let me know what you guys are doing and if this was helpful or if you've decided to use any of these, or if you have some other one that you think is just great, let us know about that too, okay? Until next time, be well. Bye-bye.